Thank you. Uh, first, let me thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk here. So, um, I will first recall what I call irregularity in this talk. So first, in dimension one. So all will denote the germs of holomorphic functions in the complex plane, germ at zero. I will denote by O at its formalization. That is to say, the ring of formal power series. And I will denote by D the germs of um, differential operators at zero. So as a null module, this is just the direction over all the powers of the uh, differentiation. Okay. And I will take P into D, differential operator. So what we can do is let uh, P act on those two spaces. The usual uh, differentiation. So we've got a, a kernel that I will denote by curve PO and a co-kernel that I will denote by curve co -curve PO and the same uh, at the formal level. We've got the formal co-kernel formal kernel and formal uh, co-kernel. Uh, there is first the following fact that uh, these four uh, vector spaces are finite dimensional. These spaces are finite dimensional. Okay, and the irregularity phenomenon, irregularity, this uh, will be a measure of the difference of the action of P on this one and this one. So irregularity measures the difference between the action of P on O and the action of P on O at. So if there is one thing to remember from this talk, this is essentially this sentence. So let, let me uh, put it in a more precise way. Uh, so I will start with the following um, exact sequence of D module. And from this, what we can do is apply the R ohm so in the category of D module of this D module. We end up with a distinguished triangle like this. So um, analytic solutions, formal solutions, and the remaining term. And so from this uh, distinguished triangle, we can, lo we can look at the uh, long exact sequence associated to it. And so for example, how do you compute this guy? For this, you need a projective resolution of this D module, but there is one uh, given by nature That is uh, uh, this two term complexes. So to compute this, you just need to apply the ohm uh, with value into O, for example. And what you end up with, you end up with uh, this complex. So what this says is that when you look at the long exact sequence uh, in cohomology, you end up uh, with the following sequence. 
um, analytic solution going into formal solutions, going into solution into the, this, the quotient, going into co-kernel PO, co-kernel PO at, and co-kernel P O at over O, and then this is zero. So there is a first theorem of Malgrange, uh, which says that this guy is zero. Okay, so we've got zero here. And so looking at this exact sequence, we've got here a comparison map between uh, analytic solution, formal solutions, and then a comparison map between uh, analytic co-kernel and formal co-kernel. And what sits in between is uh, these vector spaces. So which we, we will call the irregularity of the D module D over DP, the dimension of uh, this space. So that, and we we'll say that D over DP is regular if and if it's zero. And then when it's zero, uh, formal solution agrees with analytic solutions and the same at the co-kernel level. Okay, so this is the story in dimension one. Uh, Any P. Not zero, okay. We need all the D module. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so high dimension, now you take X to be a smooth manifold. And you'll take M an holonomic holonomic D module. So I won't say anything about uh, this holonomicity condition. It's we just need to know that this is the condition that you need so that the solution complex defined in this way uh, belongs to the, I mean, to the um, derived category of uh, sheaves with uh, bounded and constructible cohomology. And this is not only sitting in that category, uh, this is this is the perverse sheaf. Uh, that is to say, in in one word, um, the dimension of the support of the nth cohomologic uh, sheaf of them is less than um, dimension of x minus n, and the same for the dual shift, for the dual complex. Okay. Um, so now let's take Z as a sub-analytic space in X. Sub-analytic space. We can mimic uh, the definition here quite easily, starting from the following uh, exact sequence of sheaves. So these are, this is the germs, the sheaf of germs of uh, function on X along Z. Then this is the formalization of the structure sheaf along Z, and you've got a certain certain uh, uh, co-kernel doing this. You apply again the R ohm of M. You end up with a <coughs> distinguished triangle. And following what we saw in dimension one, 
this is quite natural to, to denote by the irregularity shift of M along Z by uh, this guy. So actually this will be the shifted one. Uh, shifted by one. And uh, as in dimension one, we'll say that M is regular if its irregularity shift along any Z uh, are zero. Okay? So we end up with a, an abelian categories, which has some very nice properties with respect to uh, the six operations on D modules. And what we got, what we, we, we call the Riemann Hilbert correspondence. Uh, so, first proved by uh, Kashiwaha using a completely different notion for different but equivalent notion for regularity. And then uh, proved by Mekut uh, using uh, irregularity sheaf. And this says that the solution functor induces an equivalence of categories between the category of regular anomic D module and the category of perverse sheaves on X. Regular anomic DX modules. And perverse sheaf on X is an equivalence of category. Okay. Uh, so now we'd like to to dwell on the uh, fully faithfulness uh, part of this statement. How did people use to prove the fully faithfulness of this functor? So you start with uh, two um, holomomic uh, DX module, M1 and M2. And what you can look at is the shifified are ohm between M1 and M2, so in the category of GX module. And the solution functor engines a map of complexes of sheaths with the shifified R ohm between the solution. Okay, let me call this map uh, RH M1 M2. That is to say, the Riemann Hilbert morphism. Uh, so you end up, I mean, applying uh, H0 and then global section, you just end up with the canonical map between the right, the right homes. So that is to say, vector spaces. So first in the category of D modules and then in the category of perverses. So how did people used to prove the fully faithfulness? They proved that uh, if M1 and M2 are, are regular, then this map of complex of sheaves is an isomorphism in a Dirac sense. So when you apply the H0 and then global section, you end up with an isomorphism of vector spaces. Okay? Uh, so let, let us look at a case where uh, we don't have such an isomorphism. Let me denote by exponential one over X the following um, uh, D module on C. 
So this will be uh, the underlying um, quasi coherent sheaf is the sheaf of my graphic function at zero. And I will, on a function here, I will let dx act as <coughs> differentiation uh, plus f over x2. Okay? So the solution of this, let me denote by g the inclusion of c star into c, the h0 of the solution of this guy, this is just uh, the extension by zero of the constant sheaf on c star. Uh, this is to say the sheaf generated by uh, the exponential function, ex exponential to the one over x. And h1 of the solution, uh, this is um, a skyscraper sheaf at zero, uh, shifted by one, okay? Uh, in, in general, if you, you take m, a germ, uh, fact, m, a germ of meromorphic connection, meromorphic connection, then this h1, uh, this is, again, a skyscraper sheath, but the dimension here is the irregularity number of your connection, okay? And in that particular case, this is one. So in that, in that case, we can, we can see what happens for the riemann hilbert morphism. Uh, so first, on the d-module side, look at the endomorphism of uh, this exponential to itself. We can see that this is the solution of the tensor product of the dual with our exponential module. The dual of this d-module, this is just the exponential uh, to the minus one over x. That is to say, you're replacing this formula, uh, the plus by minus dual. This tensor product, this is just uh, for c. And uh, so, in particular, this guy has no H1. It's only concentrated in degree zero. Uh, so, this guy has only H0. Uh, so, now you, we can look at this one for our favorite exponential module. And it's pretty clear to see that uh, this complex cannot be concentrated in degree zero. Why is this so? Uh, in this complexes here, you've got a Dirac sitting in degree one, which uh, uh, will force this complex to have some H2, okay? So in this case, this map is not, not an isomorphism. And why is it not an isomorphism? It's because we've got a Dirac in H1, and why is this so? This is because uh, we've got our module is irregular. So from this example, it seems that the, the only obstruction for the riemann hilbert morphism to be an isomorphism is the irregularity. So this is not only an observation, this is a theorem. That for x over c and m holonomic, uh, if the Riemann-Hilbert morphism is an isomorphism, then 
m has to be regular. Okay. So in the remaining five minutes, I will explain um, how can one prove this. So how did Kashiwara used to prove uh, the fully faithfulness? Uh, he used to start with two regular holomomic D module and factorize this map into a certain number of uh, morphism, each of them being isomorphism because M1 and M2 are regular. Okay? But I think a statement which says that uh, if some conditions are fulfilled, then a map is an isomorphism, this is not a good statement. The, 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 the right thing to do is to understand the obstruction uh, in any case. And this is the point of view of Mepkut. Uh, so, observation, which, which is due to Mepkut, this is for any M1 and M2 holonomic. Uh, the riemann hilbert morphism uh, is an isomorphism if and only if the irregularity sheaf along the diagonal of this D module is zero. And so with th this criterion you see, I mean, you see immediately how we used to prove the fully faithfulness starting from M1 and M2 regular, then this D module has to be regular and from this very definition, this has to be zero. So you get the fully faithfulness for free. Okay? Uh, so actually, this, the statement which is behind uh, this one is that if there, for M given, if the irregularity sheaf of M of this module is zero, then M is regular. And this is much better because this guy, this is really something you can work with. Sometimes you can even compute it in dimension one. I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.